Hi, everyone. So again, my name is Felix, and we're now here on the part of analyze phase. We're in. We will. We're in. We will be talking about the core of uh, analyze phase, which is hypothesis testing. But before we go to that, let's review first. Why do we have to do this tedious process using tools? and probably techniques which are statistically based. And um, hmm, I think it's not one of our favorite uh, discussion to have. <coughs> but um, given that, it's uh, mentioned during the defined phase that we have to undergo this particular stage for us to really determine the right root causes during this analyze phase. So just to give you a um, background, coming from our measure phase, we are able to identify using a process map, potential causal steps that, that are chosen by the team based on consensus and uh, uh, process familiarity or expertise. And from probably from a Gemba walk that you did prior doing your actual process map. So coming from that particular output, now we're going to put those or make use of those process steps as our initial steps that will be covered by our FMEA or failure modes and effects analysis, where we will drill down on a step-by-step -step step basis and and um, from a step-by-step -step basis or perspective, and we will try to cover all of the elements of the process coming from man, machine, method, material, and etc. So, as mentioned, coming from those, we will be confirming uh, causal steps or effects of the, uh, the steps that we identified from the previous phase. So some of the tools that we will be using are, but these are not limited to, basic hypothesis testing principles and techniques, and uh, we have design of experiments. You know, uh, these techniques and tools might be very intimidating, yet, believe me when I say this, this will be very helpful as you go along your journey of becoming uh, a future Master Black Dog. So let's start with brushing up how to choose the right hypothesis tool or technique. I have here a matrix that we can use for that. You can see on Y axis we have continuous and attribute and as well as on the X axis. Just to give you a quick background, so when we say continuous data, we're talking about data that is a data or data that are measurable, usually coming from a continuum scale. What are the examples? Um, height, width, resistance, uh, those kind of data, lead time. Yeah. And uh, for attribute, we're talking about data that could be categorized or be counted. Uh, what are the examples? So if you are dealing with data like yield data, rejection rate data, pass or fail, good or no good, um, and several categories, this will fall under this type of data. Now, let's start with the upper left portion of the matrix. So it states, it's stated here, uh, you have continuous Y and continuous X. So the right tool that we should use is none other than what we call correlation and regression, which will be covered by the succeeding discussions that we will have. Next is if you have a continuous Y, but you have an, at, an attribute X, then we will have to use the basic hypothesis testing set of tools. These are uh, examples are not limited to ANOVA or analysis of variance, the Z-test, the T-test, proportions, variant test. 
So that's for continuous y and attribute x. Now for an attribute y with a continuous x, what we will have is what we call logistics regression. But as, but as mentioned here in this slide, we will not be covering this module. This will be covered on the succeeding belt, which is the black belt. And last but not the least, we'll be having an attribute y and uh, an attribute x. For this case, we will be using chi-square. And that's how you pronounce it based on the book. Chi-square. So this, this is a simple um, hypothesis testing uh, tool selector matrix that we can use before we can actually go to the actual uh, my, um, in analysis and interpretation of the test. Now, so what is hypothesis testing? Previously, we, we discussed this, that this, this deals more on proving a particular hypothesis. So when we say hypothesis, this is from high school, this is an educated guess, right? So this is also equivalent to your potential root causes. Now, we're doing this for us to be able to determine whether the particular potential root cause is really a root cause based on data, not just a product of uh, something that is created or generated by chance. Now, we have two types of um, or before we go into the actual hypothesis testing, we have to understand that we have to set what we call hypothesis testing statements. These are important for us to be able to determine what particular test could be used. <clears throat> now, we have what we call a null hypothesis represented by H sub O. These are statement being testing to determine whether or not it is true. It is usually expressed as given in the slide. H sub O colon mu 1 is equal to mu 2. Or mu 1 minus mu 2 is equal to 0. So we assume that the hypothesis is true unless we have enough evidence to prove otherwise. So after all the tests, let's say for example, we've used a test the one of the possible outcome will be rejecting the null hypothesis because we have enough evidence that it is not true. So that is the first uh, hypothesis statement that we have to establish. Now we're talking about two. The other one is called an alternative hypothesis given by H sub A. So this is a statement that represents... Sorry. Statement that represents reality if there is no enough evidence to reject HO. Now, given H sub A, mu 1 is not equal to mu 2 or mu 1 minus mu 2 is not equal to 0. So the notation means that the alternative hypothesis, so the, the means or whatever the test statistic that we are using, there are there is a difference between those two sets of data. If we reject the null hypothesis, then practically speaking, we accept the alternative hypothesis. But as literature suggests, we don't use the term accept. Rather, we use the term reject the null hypothesis, hypothesis or reject HO. So this one, if this is true, the conclusion will be we reject, ah, sorry, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. While if this is true, then we reject HO, not accept HA. So those are the two hypothesis testing statements that we have to establish before going to the actual hypothesis testing exercises. Now, let's talk a little bit of confidence interval. <clears throat> so what is a confidence interval? A confidence interval is a range of values calculated from a data set that gives us an assigned probability that the true value lies within that range. So let's say I have a set of data covering um, a measurement of length in millimeter.
millimeter. So what we have to do is we pull in a particular data and the particular value could vary from time to time that we pull in the data from a sample coming from that particular population. So that is actually normal because we have we are expecting that the data that we will pull in or a sample data to, that we will pull in from the population has a variation as uh, given by the natural tendency of a process. Now, uh, we have what we call the estimate, usually a, a, um, a mean or a standard deviation or a particular test statistics. And this could vary based on the actual application of what we call the margin of error. So supposedly, uh, supposed to say we have, say the example here, at 95% confidence interval, the mean could be 35 plus minus 2, which means that we are 95% certain that the true mean of the population lies somewhere between 33, which is 35 minus 2, to 37, which is 35 plus 2. Now, in doing such analysis, we are actually prone to committing errors. That is why we have to understand that there are two types of errors in uh, statistics. <clears throat> we have what we call the type 1 and type 2 errors. So let's focus ourselves on determining how we can detect a type 1 and a, and a type 2 error. So on y-axis, we have what is the conclusion drawn given by fail to reject HO, and the other one is reject HO. And on our x-axis, we have true statement whether HO or the null hypothesis is true or whether the null hypothesis is false. Now, if the, the decision is to fail to reject HO, when HO is true, then we are doing a correct decision as given on the slide. Given here. Also, if we reject HO when HO is false, okay, then we are also doing a right decision of rejecting it, a false HO. Now, where are the errors? When our decision is to reject HO when HO is true, then there is the existence of a type 1 error. This is also known as the alpha risk or the producer's risk. Meaning, we are rejecting some, some, something that is true. For example, so you are manufacturing or you are producing services and you said that the serve, that particular service or output from a manufacturing process is not good. When the reality, it is good. So you are committing a type 1 error. You have the risk. The risk is in your side as a producer because you are over-rejecting good parts or output. So that is type 1 error. Now, the second type of error is committed when we are failing to reject HO when HO is false. This is also known as the beta risk or the consumer risk. An example again, so if you are the producer and you said that this is good, but the reality, this is not, then the risk is transferred to the consumer. They will be receiving products that you perceive to be good, but in reality, this is not good. So the risk is on the consumer side. So these are the two types of errors that we are trying to manage using statistics that we later on we will discuss.